Grand Theft Auto 6. And that's our video, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. If you're like myself and millions of other gamers on this small ball of rock, you too are excited for Grand Theft Auto 6. And if you're not, that's okay, we like what we like. Now we all knew this game was inevitable someday. GTA 5, since its 2013 launch, has shipped more than 195 million copies and has thus far made Rockstar billions of dollars from this one game alone. And if they didn't eventually follow it up, then they may as well just set their entire bank vault of money on fire. I'm sure many of you were there, eagerly awaiting that GTA 6 trailer drop, and when it finally did in December 2023 and you saw how pretty damn good it looked, your face may have slightly dropped when you saw the release year of 2025. Did this mean early 2025? late 2025? Suffice to say, they may as well have not even announced it yet. I don't even know what I'm doing next week, let alone two years from now. And that's if the game isn't somehow delayed. Now this isn't to say that GTA 6 is the only game to do this. Hell, some of my favourite games maybe jumped the gun a little too quickly. However, one of the big reasons developers and publishers do this, and I do mean one, there's others, we'll get to one of those, is to try and build hype. But then the problem is that if you announce your game too early, something similar may swoop in and launch in the meantime that may blow things out of the water. Case in point, Dragon Age Dreadwolf. The Dragon Age franchise is arguably one of Bioware's most successful brands, with Dragon Age Origins at the time receiving critical acclaim all around, what with its engaging gameplay, its rich narrative, diverse characters and meaningful choices, and even launched an expansion. And then Dragon Age 2 came along and kind of ruined things. But then Dragon Age Inquisition came out and, although not as good as Origins, was better than 2 in so many ways. But then EA and Bioware decided to announce their latest Dragon Age game at the Game Awards, at the time without an official title. The year they announced it, not 2023, nor 2022, not even 2021, but 2018. I'm sorry, but what year are we in now? It's 2024, and all we've seen since then is a name drop, a couple of scraps of concept art, and another teaser trailer. Now since that announcement, there have been many other RPGs that have come to try and take Dragon Age's crown. Some came close, and others failed. But then there's one game that officially released in 2023, which blew everything out of the water. You may have heard of it. Okay, yes, I'm sure some of you are probably thinking, but wasn't even Baldur's Gate 3 announced earlier-ish, like 2019? Absolutely, and I'm not disputing that. However, at least here, not only were Larian very transparent throughout the game's development, but they also put their game into early access one year later, so at least people had something concrete to play for the three years up until its official launch. My point is that since Dragon Age Dreadwolf's announcement, Baldur's Gate 3 came out and set the bar incredibly high on what an RPG could achieve whether developers agreed with the sentiment or not. This now means that when Dreadwolf comes out, and if it's not up to the high standard that Baldur's Gate 3 set, it could be in some serious trouble. Hell, even if it's a good 8 out of 10 game, which for me I'm fine with, there will be players out there who will compare Baldur's Gate 3's 10 out of 10's and Dreadwolf's 8 out of 10's and call it a shit game without even trying it. It's the way the world unfortunately works now. If your triple A game isn't getting 9's or 10's across the board, somehow it's dead on arrival, even if it is such a dumb mindset to have. Now it's entirely possible that since its announcement, maybe it's gone through some sort of development hell and was meant to be released a while ago. It is published by EA after all, but you know, I might just be a small little YouTuber, but maybe, and I'm just spitballing here, you announce something when you actually have something to show! At least GTA 6 announced this early had a gameplay trailer to show. Like, what is this? What is this? 
this gives us basically nothing. On the plus side, at least Dreadwolf is the only time Bioware and EA have done something like this in the past decade. What do you mean this isn't the only time? Yep, on the 7th of November 2020, known as N7 Day, Bioware announced a new Mass Effect game was in development, with a teaser trailer at the Game Awards the following month essentially confirming it would be a continuation in some format to the original trilogy, and not whatever Andromeda was. Seriously, I tried to play that game a couple of years ago, it's so boring! However. We're now in 2024, and according to certain sources, it might not even be released until 2028 or even 2029. It's just unreal. Which is the engine they'll be using to make it. Hey! Anyway, the original Mass Effect trilogy is arguably one of Bioware's best pieces of work, and after following it up with a game that I shan't mention again, it appears Bioware wanted to recapture the magic that the first three games distributed. But why? I'm not saying this is the official reason. But if I had to go on a wild guess... Corporate Greed. If there's been a AAA video game that was announced, which you were highly looking forward to, and then it released and launched in a broken, buggy and unfinished mess, chances are it was touched by a CEO or a shareholder or someone else whose only mindset is money and have probably never played a video game in their lives. Instead of adding things that might improve overall enjoyment, they tell the developer to try and throw in things that will make them the most money, but then there's a huge clash between them and the developers and it all just goes to hell. It's why microtransactions aren't dead yet. But every once in a while, just like Disney trying to make money off of millennials and their nostalgia, I'm a millennial and it's true, the bigwigs will try to fund what was once popular in the hopes of making it big again. Which is probably why they're looking to continue the original Mass Effect trilogy as successful as it was. I mean, they even recently released the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which remasters that same trilogy to help get people up to speed. Which, to its credit, and... For EA, I know I can't believe it myself, is actually a good remaster. But who knows? Maybe the next Mass Effect game will be incredible amongst all the hype. After all, nothing bad has ever come from announcing a game far, far too early. As you're probably expecting, this is the part where I talk about Cyberpunk. <laughs> It's a city of dreams, and I'm a big dreamer. Cyberpunk 2077 was announced in 2012. Just think about that for a second. 2012. Though nothing was officially shown until January 2013 when CD Projekt Red dropped that all too famous cinematic teaser trailer. Since that trailer, nobody had heard anything except for a couple of confirmations that it was still being worked on. Things began ramping back up from 2018 onwards with more trailers, but it seemed whatever was happening at CDPR, they couldn't catch a break, as the game kept getting delay after delay after delay where it was eventually released in December 2020. And we all know how that turned out. There's many reasons for the problems that occurred, one of the biggest being the fact they released them on platforms that clearly could not handle the game, and therefore affected overall development times. However, I'd say one of the other reasons it crashed as hard as it did was due to the hype and scrutiny CDPR put themselves under over the near decade since its announcement to its official release. 
even if you took out the broken PlayStation 4 and Xbox One versions, the next-gen versions weren't exactly up to the CDPR standard, with many trying to compare it to the likes of their previous game, The Witcher 3, which received critical acclaim at launch, though admittedly it too had its hiccups. But that's all they were. Hiccups. Not utter travesty. Despite that, however, The Witcher 3 is considered one of the greatest ARPGs of all time. I'm not saying that announcing their game far too early doomed their reputation, but I'm not not saying it. Many people say that the game is a lot better off now than when it first launched, and perhaps if they had announced their game when it was, you know, actually nearly finished, expectations would have been kept in check by players, and there wouldn't be such a level of distrust that we haven't been able to fully recover from since Alien Colonial Marines. Why the hell does Randy Pitchford still have a job in the games industry? On the plus side, at the very least what came out of this was CDPR having some transparency with its audience, letting everybody know where they're up to in their current projects. Front facing, it was seemingly a huge lesson for them. though. Whether they've learnt from it behind the scenes remains to be seen. As we near the end of the video, please allow me to list some games that had their official announcement reveal more than two years ago and have yet to be released, for whatever reason, as of April 2024. Fair warning, if you're watching this video many years in the future, most of these games will have already been released, but there's a good chance some were just straight up cancelled in no particular order. Avowed, Beyond Good and Evil 2, The Elder Scrolls 6, Todd, why the fuck did you announce this six years ago? The Outer Worlds 2, Hollow Knight, Silk Song, Senua's Saga, Hellblade 2, Fable, Dragon Quest 12, Kingdom Hearts 4, We can't let Tetsuya Nomura get away with it again! Wolverine, The Max Payne Remakes, Path of Exile 2, Project 007, A New Skate Game, Star Wars Eclipse, Prince of Persia The Sands of Time Remake, Metroid Prime 4, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic Remake, System Shock 3, A New Tomb Raider Game, A Splinter Cell Remake, Perfect Dark, Crisis 4, and last, but certainly not least because this segment is going on for way too long, Party Crasher Simulator. I don't know, I'm sure someone out there is checking every day for a release for this. <laughs> now I get it people. I get severely hyped about game announcements too. Many of the games on the list I just read out I'm actually looking forward to. But what are we doing? It's all just noise. It's publishers playing with our expectations in the hopes of keeping our eyes on them for as long as possible so they can, potentially, sell you some other cheap and broken shit in the meantime. And yet there's nothing we can do. Sure, maybe you're not looking and hoping to make a difference by not doing so, but millions of others out of your control are looking. At the end of the day, it's the publishers that are hurting themselves when a game announced a long time ago that's been in development hell flops hard because of the negative press. And then we get layoffs. But they wouldn't dream of laying off the big CEOs being paid millions of dollars who made these decisions. No! Let's lay off the quality assurance worker paid less than $40,000, crunching 12 hour days, working 6 days a week, only for the CEO to say... We... Hear you.